Howdy my totally as always tubular gamers and we're back with you guessed it another ranking video and today's is going to be on an insomniac series it's going to be on the series known as resistance now for those of you who don't remember resistance or might be too young at this point now for resistance resistance is a series of mostly first person shooters mostly developed by insomniac games all put out by sony for the ps3 the psp and the vita the premise of the series is actually pretty interesting. The series takes place in an alternate history 1950s in which an alien civilization known as the Chimera have invaded and conquered Earth, expanding their armies by capturing humans and transforming them into monster-like creature super soldiers basically to fight for them. The games always see you playing as one of the remaining human armed forces as you fight against the Chimera and just try not to be wiped out by them. The series has always been popular for its use of conventional and futuristic weaponry, which is pretty similar to Ratchet and Clank's weapons, its unique setting, and its interesting enemies, the Chimera themselves. The series was most popular during the PS3 era. The original game was a PS3 launch title and then Resistance 2 and 3 followed a few years apart each. The series was really the only shooter series on PS3 that I guess could try to rival Xbox's Halo, more so than Killzone. While Insomniac were developing the main trilogy on the PS Triple, there'd actually be two side games on the portables, Resistance Retribution and then Resistance Burning Skies. Burning Skies would actually be the last of the Resistance series, and Sony has really not talked about Resistance since then. Resistance has seemingly gone into that vault of old IPs Sony will occasionally drag out for like some kind of big crossover legacy event, but other than that, Resistance is a dead series. There hasn't been a game in 10 years now. But that's not going to stop me from making a ranking video on the Resistance series. I very much remember Resistance. I remember when it came out. I remember fanboys going off Halo versus Resistance. Pretty clear which one won there. But, you know, I still do remember Resistance. I did have some fun memories with the series, especially back in the day. And I thought, you know, let's talk about all the Resistance games. Let's rank them worst to best. We're really going to be looking at everything. How's the gameplay? How is it aged? How's the weapons, level design, story, all that stuff. This will be a fun trip down memory lane. Now unfortunately none of these games go online anymore and the online component was a pretty big part of Resistance. That was almost the main focus really. But all these games do have some decent length single player campaigns and so that's what we're going to be looking at here. And who knows, maybe one day we'll get another Resistance game and this list will be outdated. I very much doubt that though. So let's just get right into it, like, share, sub, all that good stuff. What's the worst of the Resistance games? I think the worst of them is the last Resistance game released, Resistance Burning Skies, developed by Nihilistic Software and put out by Sony in 2012 for the Vita. It wasn't a launch title for the Vita, but it was very early into the Vita's life. Now this game came out when I was in high school, and I actually remember playing it in high school and going, well, you know, it's better than Call of Duty 4 on DS, I mean, I guess it's a fine enough shooter for the Vita. But really, coming back all these years later... Yeah, Burning Skies just isn't a very good game. There was some novelty, it was a full first person shooter on a handheld, that being the Vita, but to be honest, I don't think there's a single good first person shooter like on the Vita. The best one's probably Killzone, and that was like okay at best. There was a pretty terrible port of Borderlands 2 also. And I think when you stack the Resistance games against each other, it's just not even close for me. Burning Skies is definitely in the back. Now, Burning Skies isn't like totally awful, I just think it's a relatively mediocre experience. The game takes place in the east coast of the US and you control Tom Riley who's a firefighter who fights against the Chimera during their invasion of the United States and he really does care about his family. The story, I mean it's fine enough and Tom Riley is fine enough but there's nothing really that stood out about him or his story or really any part of this plot. And that will certainly be a trend throughout this video. I thought it was just kind of generic and relatively uninspired. And I really could say the same thing about the gameplay. It is a first person shooter and you know it looks like resistance, you're fighting the enemies, it has a lot of the weapons of resistance, but it's nowhere near as engaging as the other resistance games. The weapon wheel is here, you do regenerate health, and you fight a couple different variants of the Chimera, but really that's all you do in this game is you just kind of go into every room which has about knee high walls and then you just kind of take cover and pop out to shoot them, regenerate your health, pop out and shoot the Chimera, and you do this for around 3 or 4 hours. Now maybe it's just because this is the fifth game in the series, but I thought the gameplay was actually relatively bland. I didn't think it stood out all that much. I didn't think the shooting was particularly great. The weapons weren't anywhere near as satisfying as the other games. I didn't think the enemy AI was very smart, and so engaging them wasn't all that fun. And I just really went through the motions here. 
and then the game really lacks set pieces, or at least memorable set pieces. I couldn't tell you a single one except when the scientist gets possessed, and I think it just leads to, again, a very bland, generic experience that you'll play, and by the next day, you will have totally forgotten you even played it. Like, the only thing I remember from playing this game back in high school was the game's stupid gimmicky controls where you have to, like, tap on the enemy with the bullseye, and I thought this was stupid then, and I think it's even dumber now. Like, this is just super gimmicky and unneeded. At least the game does look pretty good for a Vita game, but all in all, I don't think Burning Skies is really worth playing, and I don't think it was the send-off most Resistance fans wanted for the series. Either way, this is the last one we got. And so here we have Resistance 2, developed by Insomniac and released in 2008. I remember when the game came out and all the PS3 fanboys going nuts over it. But coming back all these years later, I'm not the biggest fan of this game. Now, Resistance 2 takes place after the first game and kind of explains why Nathan Hale is the way he is. And really, it just sees the Chimera attacking the US. The story in this game is pretty mixed. The Chimera are interesting enough and the antagonist is decent, but the main characters and the general plotline just really isn't that interesting in this game. Nathan Hale, he wasn't like amazing in the first game, he was okay I guess, but he just really sucks in this game. Like, he's just not very likable and really none of the other characters are very likable and it all just comes off really generic, cliched, and just uninteresting. The gameplay feels relatively similar to the first game. The shooting is actually better and it feels better than the first game. The weapons are a lot more defined and they are very fun to use. It is incredibly satisfying and everything has a good impact. It's a shame you can't use all of them whenever you want like the first game because there's a two weapon limit. Yeah, there's a two weapon limit here. The weapon wheel is gone and this is just lame as hell. You also regenerate health. And I know that this was the standard for shooters at the time, but I just don't really think this fits resistance. I liked the fixed health bar and I liked having all the weapons. And with this, I feel like the encounters and just general campaign were nowhere near as tightly designed as the first game. Resistance 2 is actually just not messing around. I have not died so many times in a shooter in a long ass time. I'm not this bad at the game, am I? I was just playing on normal. This game just puts you in scenarios especially near the end of the game, where it is just absolutely crushing, where the enemies just chew through your health faster than you can say Godzilla. You won't even know what attacked you most of the time. You just kind of walk around a corner and you're just dead instantly. And you'll have to replay sections over and over and over. Even on the normal difficulty, it just gets so tedious at times and it feels incredibly cheap. The AI isn't even all that great in this game either. It's not like they're outflanking you, they're outmaneuvering you, and they're doing all these crazy tactics. Usually the enemy just completely focuses on you when your whole squad is right next to you. No, it's just Nathan they're after. The Chirac level in this game, oh my my god, the Chicago level can just fuck right off in this game. I wouldn't be surprised if I died like 30 times in this level. I hated it. This game also doesn't feel as varied as the first game, which didn't even feel all that varied since there's no vehicles and a lot of the set pieces I just think are generally uninteresting. Yes, there's this big giant chimera you fight. Ooh, it's so imposing and big. It looks cool, I can give it that, but then the fight itself is really nothing special at all. It's super easy, it's super basic, you hit him like three times in the weak point, and there's just not all that much to it, final boss included. The campaign's not awful, it's still an okay campaign, albeit frustrating, but it really should be much better than it is. It should be better than the first games, and it's not. The presentation at least is good, it's a lot less muted than the first game, still a bunch of ugly ass filters on it though, and this game is ridiculously dark. You're in a building in the middle of the day and it's like dark as hell, it's ridiculous. Now I've heard that the game is better in co-op, I've heard it's less cheap and frustrating, but I shouldn't have to play it on co-op to get a better experience. Now would I recommend Resistance 2? If you like Resistance, go ahead and try it. Everybody else though can totally skip it, I just think it's too frustrating of an experience and before you say mad cause bad, all I gotta say is, you're probably right. Anyway, on to the next game. And so here we have the other Resistance spin-off, Resistance Retribution, a third-person shooter developed by Ben Studios released for the PSP in 2009. The game takes place in between Resistance 1 and 2 and sees our new face, Lieutenant James Grayson, who basically has a personal vendetta against the Chimera and I'll leave it at that. The story is actually pretty decent in this game. This game does try to attempt to make some characters in the Resistance series and I think that James Grayson is a much more interesting character than Nathan Hale. I wouldn't say the story is like amazing or the characters or the writing are great, but you know, compared to some of the other Resistance games, this is pretty decent and again, the protagonist is alright. Now when it comes to the gameplay, the game is a third person shooter rather than, you know, a first person shooter. 
and it is a shooter on the PSP, the handheld with only one analog stick, so you'll be using the face buttons in conjunction with the analog stick to shoot and move in this game. And you know, I know a lot of people don't like that, but I think it actually works pretty decent here. It's fine enough, and this game actually does have a bunch of weird other control options that involve Resistance 2 and a PS3 and even a Vita and all this other stuff that my buddy Frame Raider actually looked at not too long ago. The game also does have a kind of auto assist lock on feature that really does allow you to hit the enemies a lot easier. But generally speaking, I think the controls are more than solid enough. And when it comes to the gameplay, yeah, this is a full resistance game. It's in third person, but other than the camera perspective, really that doesn't change much. The game really does feel like a resistance game. You're mowing down tons of Chimera, you have a bunch of cool weapons with alternate fire modes, there's a number of enemy variants to the Chimera themselves, the AI is decent enough, and the weapons are actually pretty satisfying in this game. You have the weapon wheel, you don't regenerate health, good. And again, there's some actual satisfaction here with the shooting, the weapons have a lot of impact, the way the enemies react is pretty good, it's just a good time all around. You go through a number of different environments in this game, including underwater segments, which is just really weird, they control really weird, and the enemies you fight here are weird, but I actually do like the different environments you go through. There's vehicle sections, and these are pretty mindless, but good change of pace. And speaking of the pacing, I think it's actually pretty decent to good in this game. The game does have a number of set pieces, the environments change it up, and yeah, it is pretty much a straight line, it's super duper linear, but I still thought it was actually good in the pacing department. You will definitely be replaying some areas though with new enemies, and the game's checkpoint slash saving system is a bit suspicious. Other than that though, I do think Resistance Retribution is a fine enough playthrough, it's a pretty decent game, and you know, I'd argue it's like the best shooter on the PSP. I know there isn't a ton of shooters on the PSP, but I'd gladly play this over any of the Star Wars Battlefront or Medal of Honor or Brothers in Arms PSP games. I think this is much better. I do recommend the game to anybody who likes the PSP, likes shooters, or likes the Resistance series. It's actually worth playing. So here we have the PS3 launch title Resistance Fall of Man, developed by Insomniac and put out in 2006. People often say Resistance was the best PS3 launch title, but I don't know man, Need for Speed Carbon and Motorstorm came out too. Anyway, the game takes place in alternate history World War II and sees this disease taking control of people to make this alien creature known as the Chimera. And this Chimera is a force to be reckoned with as they start to take over parts of Europe. You play as Nathan Hale, an American soldier who comes over to help the Europeans. He is seemingly killed in action, but is able to withstand the Chimeran disease and it ends up giving him powers, like regenerating health. And so it's up to him to stop the Chimera with all of his soldiers. I think the general setting is actually pretty cool, I like the alternate history stuff, and the game kind of has a mockumentary style when it comes to its storytelling. Hale though is pretty boring, he just doesn't really have much going on, in fact none of the characters really have anything going on in this game. But it kind of just felt generic, at least Hale wasn't totally unlikable like the second game though. Now when it comes to the gameplay, it is a pretty solid first person shooter that still holds up nowadays. Really you're just kind of dropped into these environments and go from point A to B, shooting as many Chimera as possible. Sometimes you're given teammates, sometimes you're not. The game is super linear, you just kind of go from corridor to corridor shooting as many Chimera as possible, at least the shooting is actually pretty decent to good nowadays, a lot of the weapons have impact and are satisfying, the weapons themselves are super interesting, they all have alternate fire modes and they definitely feel a lot more like Ratchet and Clank than say a realistic shooter. There's some really interesting ones here, and everything has an alternate fire, which is pretty cool. The game actually has health packs, not regenerating health, and it lets you carry every weapon. This game has a weapon wheel, and it's great. The experimentation is great. There are some really cool weapons to use here, and they really do give you an opportunity to use every cool weapon in your arsenal. And I think the game's experimentation is one of its strongest aspects. The Chimera themselves are no slouch either, there's a couple different variants and fighting them is generally engaging. Some of the Chimera though are total bullet sponges in this game, they take just way too much ammo. And oftentimes they really do have pinpoint accuracy too, it's probably my biggest issue is sometimes the Chimera encounters. This game is a real challenge, it is nowhere near as cheap or frustrating as Resistance 2, but it is no walk in the park on the normal difficulty. It feels much more like a fair challenge versus Resistance 2. There are the occasional cheap moments, but it was just, again, nowhere near as frustrating. Any part with these stupid bombs though, like I hated these parts, super clunky, and then the game does love to throw these stupid spider enemies at you all the time. I never like these in video games. Why are they in so many games? These spider enemy things are just annoying, and they're not fun to kill in Resistance either. 
But generally speaking, I think the campaign still holds up. It's pretty solid, and I think that the pacing is actually pretty all right in it. The game does have some variety. There are some vehicle sections. These are fine enough, and I think that the game mixes it up with its weapons and its enemies enough to stay interesting throughout. I was engaged throughout. Something that has aged this game though is its muted colors and presentation. This really is a real man's game where it's all gray and brown and black and shit. And everything's gotta be dark and edgy and cool and serious and it's like, okay, well, this screams 2006, but you know, it still looks okay. The music was actually pretty decent in this game. Now Resistance, I would say, isn't an outstanding FPS or an amazing first person shooter and it doesn't reinvent the wheel, it does have the weapon wheel, it doesn't do anything all that crazy and at times it can feel a bit generic, but for the time this was actually really quite good and coming back all these years later, yeah I think it's still pretty decent, it does hold up, is it worth playing? If you like shooters, go ahead and try it, otherwise, mm, maybe not. So here we have what I believe is the best of the Resistance series, Resistance 3, coming out in 2011. Now I remember playing this game back when it came out actually, I remember getting it at launch, 2011 was a crazy year for gaming, but I do remember sitting down and playing Resistance 3 for a weekend, I remember really liking the campaign and thinking the multiplayer was pretty alright. Nowadays obviously we only got the campaign though. The game takes place many years after the second game and you play as Joseph from Resistance 2. He's discharged after the ending of that game and he's really just trying to survive at this point as only 10% of humanity is left and is just kind of hiding from the Chimera. The Chimera really have wiped out all of humanity and are in the end stages of taking over the planet. This game has a really good atmosphere and vibes here, like the Chimera are evil in this game. They are in the end stages of taking over the world. In the first couple games, they were trying to convert humans into the Chimera. Here, they just want them all dead. It really is end of the world stuff, and I like what they do here. Joseph is totally different from the second game. He's all about his family, the ones he loves, and he sets out on this journey, one final journey to stop the Chimera and save the world. He's better than Hale. He's the best protagonist in the series. He's not like, you know, amazing, but he is pretty decent. And I really do like the story of this game, you do feel like you're actually part of a Resistance just trying to survive. Now when it comes to the gameplay, it is the best out of all the Resistance games. The shooting certainly feels the best out of all three of the main games. It feels really nice, all the weapons have impact and weight, and I really do actually like all of them. They bring the weapon wheel back, so thank you, all the experimentation is back. Everything has the alternate fire modes, and I think it's probably the best arsenal of any of the Resistance games. A lot of really cool weapons here, and fighting the Chimera, is not they're not messing around in this game either. The game is tricky, it's nowhere near as annoying as the second game, and the AI are actually decently smart. The health packs return, no more regenerating health, and I think thanks to this, a lot of the encounters are much better designed, they're a lot more tight and focused, and just better. Weapons level up like they do in Ratchet and Clank, the more you use them, they level up, they get stronger new abilities, and so yeah, you'll really want to use all these weapons, I think this is a great addition to resistance, and low-key it should have been there from the start. And I just think that the gunplay is actually incredibly satisfying. Something different about this resistance game is you do actually get to fight humans. There are some crazy humans here, it is the end of the world after all. Now when it comes to the level design, these levels have a ton of set pieces and most of them are actually memorable. I think they're way better than resistance 1 and 2 set pieces, they're actually, you know, you can recall them. And even nowadays, as I look back, I remember really liking the adventure across America, and I still think it totally holds up. It might not have the most gripping narrative, but it makes the campaign really enjoyable. I wish the other two games had such exciting campaigns, really. I think the pacing is actually just incredibly well done, it never gets dull. And while it isn't the longest campaign, it's not as long as Resistance 1 or 2, I thought it was the most engaging and overall just the best campaign. The graphics are also the best, the presentation is pretty solid, and it still holds up pretty well. I even remember liking the multiplayer for this game, I thought it was pretty good. If you're looking for a shooter that is only on the PS3, that is still only on the PS3, then Resistance 3 is totally a good game to play. And I think that if you like shooters, Resistance is a pretty decent series. It's not the Halo killer like Sony wanted this series to be, but you have a series here that is pretty solid. It's pretty consistent, they're all fun shooters, most of them hold up pretty decently nowadays, and while it didn't go out with a bang and it went out with a whimper, I still think Resistance 3 out of all of them is totally worth playing, but I would have no problem recommending the series to anybody who likes shooters. 
Unfortunately, the main series is still stuck on PS3. It's not on PS4 or 5. You will need a PS3 to play them, and that's a shame because I, th I think that they should be re-released in some way. I think people should be able to experience these games, and yeah, they deserve a re-release on PS5, more so than The Last of Us remake or Horizon Zero Dawn remake where you could already play them on PS5, but you know, that's a topic for another day. I think Resistance is fun. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know down below your favorite Resistance or any fun memories, and I'll see everyone next time. Yeah, let's get out of here. Bye-bye.